This is Your Pain Game Podcast, where we talk about the game of living in and with chronic pain and trauma, getting to the heart of how to heal. I am your host, Lindsay Soprano. On the show, I plan on discussing with doctors, chronic pain patients, holistic practitioners, loved ones, and anybody that is interested in having their voice heard in the chronic pain and trauma world that we live in. I might be a little raspier today here than usual. I'm more exhausted than I usually am, which is hard to believe. So I work closely with and sit on the board of directors for the CRPS Warriors Foundation, a foundation that I helped the CEO and founder start a little over two years ago now. And in this foundation, we hear story after story of how CRPS debilitates not just the patient, with those that love them and that surround them. And unfortunately, we lost another person to suicide. Alas, the extra raspy Lindsay here today. This suicide disease, as it has been coined, is no joke. This hits home and my heart tragically hard. It's the third one that we've heard of in the past month or so. And those are just the ones that we've heard about in our small circle. So you can imagine how many this is affecting worldwide. So my pain level and anxiety about this suicide disease is is incredibly high and it affects so many parts of my life, my work, my family, my friends, my sweetie. And what's scary about this is that I understand the feeling of wanting to die on some of my most painful and debilitating days to just give up. It's what I call writing letters to say goodbye to my loved ones. And that is freaking insane. (laughs) but that's why I'm here, you guys. One huge thing that I'm taking from these suicides that I keep hearing about is that I know that this disease is killing me. Um, You wouldn't look at me and really think about that I've got something that is, but it is, and it doesn't feel like it's going softly. (laughs) But I'm trying to play the good fight over here and I have to continue to live my ass off even though it hurts so devastatingly bad to do so. And this summer I traveled to Italy and I was scared beyond belief, like almost to the point that I was not going to go on my trip, that I wasn't going to make it through just based on pain, but I did. And traveling gives you perspective. One of the things that stood out to me as my sweetie and I were traveling was pride. Pride flags were everywhere. Same sex lovers were openly displaying PDA and it made my heart so very happy. And it felt loving and so incredibly honest. I don't understand why people can't share the love they have for another outside of the doors of their homes. Show your love of everyone in your life. Shout it out. You know, what? this is the only, this is the only chance we get. <laughs> um, and it makes me pretty sad and angry sometimes about how shitty we treat people in this world that are different from our specific lens. I truly feel like we all need to just be more loving and forgiving and understanding and to not make choices for other people that don't really affect your lives, but truly affect those around you that you might be judging and made, making decisions for and on behalf of them. Don't we all have the right to be who we are? Don't we all have the right to love who we love? Don't we have the right to make decisions about our bodies, the way in which we choose? How does that affect you? If you're not into it or you don't agree with it, it has nothing to do with you. Lately, it certainly doesn't feel that way. And as a strong-willed woman, you know, hear me roar in this world, I find it hard to believe that we are going backward. And it is hard for me to not discuss politics because we are so incredibly divided, right? And I don't want to put our listeners into a space where I am judging them for their politics and their beliefs because then I'm just a hypocrite like another person would be. But I do want to make it clear that I am a bleeding heart liberal and I disagree with the majority of what our last administration had put into play because it wasn't just the four years that were affected. That administration has affected our nation here for decades now and not to mention the globe. And now we are here going backward, in my opinion. So, all right. 
I'm getting off my soapbox, but I had to get that out. (laughs) And with that being said, I would like to introduce you to our guest today. Her name is Abby. Hey, Abby. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, uh, We've known each other for what? How, like over 20 years or something? a little under 20, I think. Yeah, geez, that's insane. What the heck? Time just flies, people. Really does. Again, following what I just said about show your love. (laughs) What better time than now? And how we met is that she was in, she actually went to the same high school as me, but just a a lot, you know, more years less than me. But she was a student in one of my mom's classes, which was called the Virtual Enterprise Program. And it was a program about starting your own business and the value of entrepreneurship. And at the time I was looking for a graphic design intern for my marketing agency. And that's when we were introduced. And we were introduced when she was a young man. So thanks again for being here with me today, Abby. Uh, It means the world to me. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, it's like, it's great. (laughs) And you know me sometimes better than I know myself. So, you know, I might get a little emotional, but what's new? Um, And today I'd like to not only talk about your story and journey, but also give you the opportunity to help educate our audience a bit on the topics that you're going to be talking about of being trans and the misconceptions around that and what it's like been for you and what your future holds, but also to touch people's hearts that might be struggling with tough decisions that you've had to make and what you've gone through. Are you cool with us talking about that today? Yeah, sounds great. All right. I'm rolling out the red carpet for you, baby. (laughs) Floor is yours. (laughs) Thanks so much. I know you were, you were talking about pride and some of the political challenges in the world right now. And it really feels like this is an important topic to talk about. A lot of the U.S. seems to be demonizing trans people. They're rolling out the same old arguments that were used against, you know, gay people and lesbians back years ago, accusing them of being pedophiles and et cetera. So it's, it's an important topic that, uh, I don't know, I just feel like the more viewpoints are out there, the more people have the chance to actually meet someone who's transgender, the more opportunities there are for empathy. So yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, um, well, I'm happy to have you here to talk about, you know, there is, there's some painful, traumatic things that come with this, like you were just mentioning, and, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, it's, being trans is a little weird in some ways, because there's a lot, there's at least some pain involved. There's a lot of difficult, I don't know, just life stuff that happens, but there's also a lot of joy in the process as well. So there, there's a balance between those two things. Um, So I'm a transgender woman, which means when I was born, people looked at me and they're like, oh, that's a boy. And my parents gave me a a male name and I was just treated as a boy growing up. And over time, I realized that that wasn't really my, I don't know, my my personal viewpoint. It's, It's tricky because everyone around you tells you that this is who you are. And it, it took me quite a while, like till I was in my mid thirties to really understand my own sense of identity and understand that what I thought about myself didn't really match with what other people were telling me about myself. So um, I came out in my mid thirties, well, I guess a little early thirties and I'm in my mid thirties now. So it's been about two and a half years since I came out and I will be upfront just to be clear that, you know, I can really only speak for myself in this experience. Um, Every trans person is a little bit different and might have a little bit different pain points and, and the struggles. The Pew Research did a study just recently, earlier this year, that says trans people are about 1.6% of the U.S. population. And if you look at adults under 30, they're about 5%. So it's a pretty small number. Yeah. And just because there are, a, it's a small percentage doesn't mean that we just count this percentage and we make it so much more of a big deal, even and I'm not discrediting or discounting, obviously you, it's a big deal for you, but it seems like our culture just makes it this big, huge ordeal all the time when it's like, guys, is it, <laughs> why don't you focus on what's going on in your house? All right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. So I don't know. I just, I hope that uh, sharing my own journey will be a voice against some of the negativity that's out there. And I don't know. I, I just never had trans people in my life or that I, that I could look to and empathize with when I was growing up. And, you know, perhaps talking about this will be a positive step in that direction for others. I think that's great. I remember when you came out to me, uh, you've worked for me for so long with me, not for me, with me or partner with me. And 
I was, it wasn't that I was taken aback. I thought that you were quitting. Because <laughs> what did you say? You were like, um, Lindsay, we need to talk. I know. And I was like, oh gosh, it could have been a million things like Amanda and I are pregnant. You know, right. like, I mean, it could have been a number of things. First thing, of course, I'm like work, of course, Lindsay. And then when you told me, I, you know, I, 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 I look back at it and I feel like my reaction was, I mean, I think as good as I could have been. Um, I was just, I was surprised in what, as I circled back and thought about it over the, you know, the next couple of weeks and months, and even uh, up until us talking about doing this episode, I had felt like bad that as close as we are, and as long as I've known you and watched you grow and become who you've become, which is a wonderful, wonderful person, I felt sad that I didn't know that you were feeling this kind of pain and that you were so uncomfortable. And so I, I took that on me and I was like, Oh my God, I have to pay more attention. (laughs) And I consider myself to be in the, in the percentage of people that gives a shit about people, you know? So anyways. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is tricky because I don't have a huge amount of stuff that I can point to early in my life that would have given me signs to tell me, you know, Hey, you're transgender. Um, I don't know. I, I describe my own coming out process as sort of like a, a process of getting individual puzzle pieces throughout my life. And I just didn't have the, the big picture. I didn't, I didn't know what I was making. And I had these little instances of discomfort or pain or awkwardness. And I didn't know how to put the whole thing together and, and truly get it. And one of the pieces is like under the couch. You can't find it. Exactly. <laughs> Where's the corner? My God, there's only four of those pieces. <laughs> Um, so, so when I was growing up and, you know, throughout my life, I've struggled with what's called gender dysphoria, which is basically the discomfort a trans person has between their biological sex and their gender identity. You look at yourself in the mirror and you don't quite recognize the person you see there. A lot of my personal dysphoria is social. So like who I relate to and relationships that I have and sort of where I want to fit into the world. So that, that was a tricky thing for me is just, I don't know, I just needed to collect all those individual pieces and it took me a long while to understand what it all meant. Like I said, I, I just didn't have a lot of people that I could point to and be like, oh, I recognize myself in them. And I don't know, it, it, was, just, it was just tricky. For just for so long, I didn't know myself. So I don't know, I think I, think I struggled a bit growing up because I didn't really have a clear picture of the difference between my own gender and my sexuality. And that was a a question mark that I don't know how to explain it. Basically, it didn't give me any clues that I might be trans. Uh, Growing up, I've always liked women and that was sort of expected of me in my household. You know, I I grew up in a pretty small, well, not small, I grew up in a large, I have uh, three brothers and sisters. Um, but I grew up in a conservative family and, and being trans or any sort of LGBT wasn't going to fly with my parents. So I just didn't, I don't know, I, I knew who I was attracted to, but that didn't give me any sort of clue that maybe I should also look at my gender as well. So I have a question in regards to that. So, and, and this might be a question that comes up from people, but so you've always loved, the, you've always loved women, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm boy crazy like nobody's business. So I knew that about me. You knew that about you. Does this, does this, and this might be a stupid question for you, but Mm -hmm. or not for you, but for me to ask. But so if someone was going to ask you, are now, are you gay now? Cause you're married to a woman. And does that, does that make you gay or does that make, can you explain the difference between the two? If there is for you, Mm -hmm. because I think everybody has a different, like you're saying every single person in the community, they're all different. So we can't treat everybody the same, just like people can't treat me the same. Are you kidding me? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the important thing to remember about the labels you assign sexuality is that they're based on whatever that person's current gender is. So in this case, as a woman, and I like women, so I mostly identify as a lesbian. Okay. Um, there are other terms for, I don't know, edge cases on who you're attracted to, but that's personally how I identify. Well, and I think that, I think that's an important, that, yeah, because it's, I think that that's, well, now what, what does that actually mean? And it could mean something different to you than it could be, you know, the next person. So mm-hmm. um, I'm just curious about, you know, you, of course. 
Because you're the only person I care about in this room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My, my experiences growing up were a little weird because I, I felt like I always liked women. 